don't like to be bullied. That full interview coming up in the show. But let's bring in now Shadow Minister for Home Affairs and Cyber Security, James Patterson. Uh, great to see you, James. Thanks for your time. Look, you wrote to Meta, the owners of Facebook, outlining your serious concerns about their censorship of content relating to The Voice. What did you argue in your letter? Well, thanks for having me, Shari. That's right. Last week, I wrote to Meta because I thought their fact check applied by the RMIT Fact Lab against the Peter Credlin editorial on the length of the Uluru Statement was just the latest in a long line of egregiously biased and partisan fact checks undertaken by the RMIT Fact Lab. And it was contrary to the evidence that Facebook gave to me uh, during the committee inquiry into foreign interference through social media, where they said they had learned their lesson of their excessive censorship during the pandemic period and they wouldn't be doing so again and that they would have a bias for more free speech and free debate in the context of the upcoming voice referendum. So I was very concerned by this latest fact check and I wrote to them last week. They replied to me today and uh, promised that they would in end without any further delay the relationship they have with RMIT and I really welcome that because in my opinion RMIT Fact Lab has been acting like activists uh, and partisans not like independent fact checkers and we can't rely on any of the fact checks they've done during the voice debate which, as you pointed out in your opening, have been egregiously biased against the no side, with 17 fact checks of the no side versus none for the yes side. I think that shows exactly where they're coming from. I mean, in this instance, uh, the Sky News investigation led by Jack Houghton was able to uncover uh, exactly who the fact checkers are behind the RMIT Fact Lab. We were able to see what they were sharing. Um, you know, you call them activists. But in many instances, these fact checkers that the social media companies rely on are completely anonymous. You know, how difficult is it to determine whether something is misinformation? Because a lot of what's been censored, quite frankly, is not false or misinformation at all. Show sure, that work by your colleague Jack Horton was outstanding because it is very difficult to find and to prove that the people who are putting themselves up to be independent and impartial fact checkers are actually people who have a very strong view of their own. And they're entitled as Australian citizens to have whatever view they want on the voice referendum and to vote however they do, but they shouldn't hold themselves out to be independent and unbiased and to be uh, arbiters of fact if they themselves have a strong perspective, which they clearly do. And if these people have gone to the lengths of sharing on social media, pro-yes propaganda, well then they're clearly not fit to be presiding over independent fact-checking process and it's been a very clear failure internally at RMIT University to allow this to continue. Now let's not forget that the relationship between Meta and RMIT Fact Lab is not the only one because of course RMIT Fact Lab also has a relationship with the ABC and has been involved in extensive fact-checking on behalf of the ABC. Well I would like the ABC to now review their relationship with RMIT Fact Lab in light of Meta's decision that they can't be relied upon to be unbiased uh, and impartial and in light of the fact that their supposed accreditation with the international fact-checking bodies uh, have lapsed and are no longer current. I mean, that is one of the things they hold out mm. to be, evidence of their impartiality and their professionalism, and it doesn't exist. Yeah, and, and ABC seems to be distancing itself from RMIT Fact Lab, but, you know, we still need to get to the bottom of that relationship. Uh, James Patterson, what about the foreign interference angle? I mean, you note that Facebook is owned by a foreign company. This debate is ultimately a change to the Australian constitution and whether Australians support that. So tell me about that angle of foreign interference. Hmm. What Australians are going to be asked to do in about six weeks' time is to vote on the most radical change proposed to our constitution since Federation. Now, whatever your view on the merits of that, it is a matter for Australians. Australians should be free to debate it. They shouldn't be restricted by anyone from engaging in that debate. And they certainly shouldn't be restricted by anyone who is foreign headquartered, a foreign company, and uh, determining what we can and can't say in this debate. And I was particularly troubled by that aspect. Now, this isn't foreign interference in the same way that foreign interference by the Chinese government or the Putin regime constitutes foreign interference. But it does put companies like Meta and Twitter and YouTube and all the other social media platforms at great risk of being having, having to make difficult decisions about what are the permissible bounds of public debate in a liberal democracy like Australia. That is not their role. That is not their uh, remit. And they shouldn't just outsource that to activist left-wing fact-checkers and say they're not making these decisions. If they're slapping the label on, if they're censoring the content, as even Paul Barry at the ABC has acknowledged, then they are taking responsibility for those decisions and mm. they must.
So are you saying that the foreign interference legislation could apply to these social media companies? I don't think it would unless it was directed by a foreign government. If the government uh, of which where these companies are headquartered was directing them to engage in that activity, it could potentially mm. enliven the provisions of our foreign interference and influence schemes. Uh, but if it's just private companies acting privately, which is what I believe it is in this instance, then there's no evidence that that would breach those laws. But it's a principle, a principle that a Silicon Valley tech company shouldn't be deciding for Australians what we can hear, what we can say, what we can read about our own voice referendum. Mm. And whether it is Peter Credlin or anyone else, at Sky News, they should be able to reach their audiences without being interfered with by these platforms or their so-called independent fact-checkers. Yeah. James Patterson, just very quickly before you go, the former ACT Chief Prosecutor Shane Drumgold is reportedly taking legal action against the Sofronoff Board of Inquiry. Uh, according to media reports this afternoon, he's asking a court to quash the damning findings that have been made against him, arguing that these conclusions are legally unreasonable and accusing the inquiry of bias. What do you make of this? Well, Mr Drumgold, like any other Australian, is entitled to take the legal action available to him if he believes uh, that that's necessary. The only thing I'd note, Shari, is that it was Mr Drumgold's letter originally that caused the Sofronoff inquiry to be brought into being, and he might be careful what he wishes for, given the last how that went last time. All right, Senator James Patterson, thank you very much for joining me.